tons of codes, tons of slides around your ears and eyes. Um, I'm doing this talk um, in, in two parts as well. Um, the first part is we're going to look at a, at a migra migration from an existing Grails 2 application to a Grails 3 application in theory. And after that, uh, we're going to take an application that is actually running in production that has a decent level of complexity and that is serving approximately 100 concurrent users in production uh, today, um, right now. And uh, we'll take that application that was developed with Grails 2 and port it to Grails 3. Unfortunately, I can't do the gag I did at Spring 1 to GX where I committed the application after the talk to production because it's now already on production in Grace 3. Nevertheless, uh, I think uh, it should be a pretty good learning experience for everybody. Um, in my eyes, Grace 3 is the most major and radical change in the history of Grace. Uh, why is that? Uh, basically, Grace 3 is a complete rewrite of Grace. Um, the principles stayed there, uh, but the core has been ripped out and completely newly written based on Spring Boot uh, and uh, built on Gradle uh, with a build system. So that means uh, there is some, I would say, migration uh, involved here. And uh, to be very clear, uh, moving from Grails 2 to Grails 3 requires you to do a little bit of stuff in a, in my eyes, certain order, in order to make the transition smooth. It's not a, I would say, high risk, uh, whatnot transition. No, I think uh, my experience with migrating applications from two to three, is basically if you follow the process that I show you in this talk, uh, should be pretty much straightforward. But you need to be aware of a couple of things, and we'll w I'll walk you through those uh, topics today. So, how to migrate? So, um, in my eyes, you should be aware that a Grace application usually consists of the application itself and various plugins. And um, I would say, in terms of the plugins, you will usually find yourself in a position where you use some of the uh, official or public plugins you find on the Grails uh, public uh, plugin directory. Uh, fortunately, the plugin directory has been revamped a little bit. So uh, a couple of uh, months ago, it was when you hit the plugins button on the Grails side, you were still uh, stuck with the Grails 2 plugins, and they aren't compatible with the Grails 3 plugins. So your plugins as well need to be migrated. And um, as of today, I would say that most of the major plugins uh, that you find out there on the official distributions have been migrated to Craze 3. Um, that includes, for instance, uh, MongoDB, GORM, um, Spring security stuff, and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, especially for your own plugins, you will have to migrate them as well to, uh, to Craze 3. Uh, in my talk today, I will take a short look at the migration of plugins, and I'd like to spend a little bit more time on the migration of applications. Why? Because tomorrow there is going to be another talk uh, that is uh, dedicated to the migration of plugins. So here uh, the speaker, I think Panit is his name or something like something similar, I don't remember exactly, uh, will take you exactly through the migration of plugins. Um, the decision when you should migrate, should uh, I think uh, you should drive that from the availability of the public plugins that you use. If there are certain public plugins that you use that haven't been migrated yet, check out the roadmap. Will they ever be migrated? I think there are a couple of plugins out there where there might be some sort of question mark, or uh, will they be migrated in a timely manner? If they will be migrated in a timely manner. I would wait until they are available. So you don't, you don't have to fork them and do the migration. Um, if they are not going to be migrated, you have two choices. Either you do the migration on your own, 
and contribute it maybe back to the community, which would be a very nice and fair move. Uh, or um, you move away from the plugin and take ownership of the functionality of yourself. Uh, but that is, uh, I, I think, the, the main driver. If all of your plugins are, or public plugins are available, um, I would highly recommend you to move to Grails 3. Why? Because the longer you wait, the harder the migration will be. I mean, there have already been a couple of changes between 3.0 and 3.1, for instance, and we will take a look at a couple of these as well. And um, it's not going to get easier moving to Grails 3.2, 3.3, and whatnot. So uh, I think now is a pretty good time and also a pretty conservative time to move to Grails 3. Um, the first difference you have to notice when moving to Grails 3 that there are quite a few different file and directory locations. For instance, Grails app con build config groovy is now build.gradle. Grails 3 runs with a Gradle build. Um, conf config groovy is application.groovy. URL mappings have been moved from the configuration to the controller directory. That's very important when you uh, migrate your stuff. Conf bootstrap.groovy is now Grails app slash init, bootstrap groovy, scripts is source main scripts, and so on and so forth. I don't want to walk you through the whole list. We will see that in practice when we migrate our application. But you have to be aware of uh, these differences. Um, the next thing is there are certain files that are now present in the Grails 3 world, world that, aren't going to, that aren't present in Grails 2.x. For instance, build.gradle. Grails 2 wasn't built with Gradle. So now we have the whole Gradle build sec in terms of files. Um, another thing is logback.groovy. Um, Grails 3 runs logging through logback, not through the old uh, log4j configuration anymore. And um, you can now configure your application with YAML files. And um, if, you, if you run uh, Grails uh, create app, you will get an application.yaml configuration file. So the old configuration can still be used. So you don't have to transfer it right away to YAML, but um, the shiny new Grails 3 world is, um, I would say, YAML is the preferred first class citizen. And um, application.groovy um, is uh, uh, an application class which is basically used by Spring Boot to start the Grails 3 application. Who of you uh, knows what Spring Boot is, how Spring Boot applications look like? Okay, Spring Boot is a, I would say, well, mm, uh, a feature, a, a high priority module in the Spring ecosystem that enables you to write web applications um, that you can start with java minus jar my web application dot jar. And this then starts up an embedded Tomcat, embedded Chetty, whatnot, with application. And Spring Boot requires that you have, I, I call it always the bootstrap application, uh, where all the configuration is being uh, picked up and, and so on. And this is the equivalent in the Grails 3 world, because Grails 3 runs on top of Spring Boot. I like um, to say that Grails 3 is Spring Boot on steroids. So it's, I mean, Spring Boot is really awesome. And if you write Spring apps and uh, are working in the Spring ecosystems here and there, take a close look at Spring Boot. It's really great. And um, with Grails 3, especially in the web world, uh, it gets even better. Um, when you do the migration, you will have files that you don't need anymore. For instance, application.properties is going to be moved to build.gradle. Datasource.groovy is going to be merged in application YAML. So there is no longer a datasource.groovy for GORM. You just configure GORM in your application YAML. Um, lib is going away. Application context XML is moving away, uh, but is, is being moved um, or 
self-defined spring beans uh, are now present in resources Groovy. WebXML is no longer needed for uh, grade three due to WebXML configurations in spring. Site mesh XML is no longer present and so on and so forth. So after the migration, you can mostly remove these files. Basically, you can remove the files because they are not going to be picked up. So if you have some special stuff going on in the web XML, you need to migrate this stuff into the Grails 3 application. After that, you can toss the file away. So a very important hint, um, if you use before and after interceptors uh, in the Grails 2 world, you have to uh, replace them by the Grails 3 standalone interceptors because the before and after interceptors are no longer supported. and They are no longer being executed by Grace 3. They're dead. Um, another thing, when you migrate applications that use file uploads, um, I highly recommend you to adjust the property Grace controllers upload max file size. Because the default value, I don't have it in my um, uh, I don't have it at hand right now, that is running in Grace 3 is pretty low. So if you upload bigger images, for instance, and the application that we are later going to look at is a online music magazine, and uh, this music magazine has a lot of concert photos, so we have rather big file uploads in the 50 to 100 megabytes uh, area for photo galleries of concerts or festivals. Um, we needed a bigger fi uh, default file size. We were able to run the application with the Grails 2 standard, but no longer with the Grails 3 standard. So you might want to check that as well. Um, the general migration steps that I recommend and that are also recommended in the official um, documentation of Grails 3. There is a chapter on migration and I highly recommend you to check this out as well. Um, is you create a new app for Grails 3. Don't do the migration in your old Grails 2 project. You, it, it, you will probably mess it up in there. Create a new application. Yes, you, use, uh, you lose uh, uh, commit history and whatnot, true, but n nevertheless, I think it is the best approach. Um, after that, you copy source Java, source Groovy, to source main Groovy. So your custom non-Grails uh, components that are in source Java and source Groovy of the Grace 2 application are being merged together to source main Groovy. Um, there is no longer a source main Java directory in Grails 3. Um, Grails app is being moved one-to-one -to, -one to the Grails 3 application, just a copy. Um, then you move unit and integration tests to test unit uh, or source integration uh, tests Groovy. When this copying has been done, and these steps are really CP minus RF directory A to directory B jobs, nothing, nothing special there. Then you start playing around in your um, in your project. You rename build config you, or you, you take the configuration for the build in build config and move it to build.gradle. If you didn't adjust build config in any way, if you just ran with the standard Grails build configuration, you don't have to do a thing. Your defaults are going to be in build.gradle. But what you obviously will have is uh, you need to fix build imports. Uh, especially on the plugins. The plugins, uh, you will need new Grails 3 capable plugins for your Grails 3 application. You can't run Grails 2 plugins in a Grails 3 application. It won't work. And um, when this has been done, you move the URL mappings.groovy from the cont directory to the Grails app controllers directory. Then, we uh, rename config.groovy to application.groovy and uh, we merge data source.groovy to the application YAML. That is, I would say, in a high level view, the general approach that you do in order to migrate. 
Oh, sorry, I forgot the log for J to log back configuration. Um, when this has been done, um, you do a cleanup. So when you have done all these things, you remove the files that you don't need anymore. For instance, data source.ruby is no longer needed, you can delete it. But you need to have it merged into application.yaml. Um, the first step, however, is you have to migrate your plugins. And I will go very quickly through that because there is a dedicated session on this tomorrow. Um, what is very important regarding the plugins, not just the migration, but you, you might want to check if some defaults or some um, certain behaviors in plugins have changed. Uh, best example is Mon the MongoDB plugin. Um, if you use the, uh, if you have used the MongoDB plugin in the Grails 2 world, um, the plugin has been using an older persistence engine for MongoDB, which means uh, that the data in MongoDB isn't compatible to the newer engine default, which is now in the Grails 3 plugin of MongoDB. It's very easy to fix that, but you just need to be aware, and it's documented. So for all the plugins you use, you might want to check the documentation of the plugin and see if you need to, to readjust some sort of configuration. And we, for instance, on the Mongo part, we will go through this step as well. It's easy to fix, you just have to know it. Um, and if you migrate plugins, you also go ahead, create a new Grace 3 plugin, copy the sources, then you need to handle the plugin descriptor, um, add the dependencies to the build, modify package imports, migrate configuration, and you need to register artifact handler definitions, and you need to migrate the code generation scripts. There's also been a change to that. And then you remove unnecessary files. We'll take a, a look at some of these steps. And I, I guess the session tomorrow will go ways, ways deeper than I do uh, on this one here. Um, the plugin descriptor um, on the gray of the Grace 2 application has to be moved to source main Groovy Grails plugin slash plugin name. And you can copy it, but what you have to do is you need to add the package name because in the Grace 2 world, it didn't have a package name. That's it with the plugin descriptor. Pretty straightforward, easy step. And um, if you use artifact handler definitions that were written in Java, very important, in Java. The Groovy um, uh, artifact handler definitions aren't very, uh, aren't important here because they get detected automatically by Grails. Um, if you have some in Java, you need to register then in uh, source main resources, meta in grails.factories and uh, with grails.core artifact handler. And that's where you declare your artifact handler. No difficult step, you just need to be aware of it. And then um, you need to address old Gunt code generation scripts because you need to replace them by um, new code generation scripts in Grace 3 or move them to Gradle tasks. As many of you in the audience know, um, Gradle is based on Groovy and Gradle is a very capable, a very flexible and powerful build system. So you can write Gradle tasks for Gradle's applications that take care of code generation steps. And um, the recommendation is simple stuff can be do, done very nicely with the new code generation API and more complex tasks are better off uh, with uh, Gradle tasks. A simple code generation script is something uh, like this. Um, I won't go a lot into detail. There is an API for that. It's documented in Grails. So uh, you might want to uh, check this out. And um, you can also, um, for instance, define a uh, application command as a Gradle tasks. For instance, run query and uh, you write your code right into the Gradle task and deploy this in there. Um, and you can even add the commands to the class path in build.gradle and run Grails run query and you get the whole power of uh, Groovy Gradle for code generations. More interesting for our talk is the migration of applications. I went through most of these steps already. Uh, just take these steps as a, a quick reminder when you do this, which steps you do. You can 
look up the, the slides. I will post them to speaker deck uh, right after the talk and I'll uh, populate the link through Twitter, at BitBoss, uh, if you want to follow me. And uh, if you take this slide deck when migrating an application, you might want to look up these steps right there. And the last step that you need to do is obviously test intensively. I said it's no um, high risk um, whatnot migration. If you follow these steps that I've outlined, you will get to a pretty good result. But nevertheless, uh, and we will see that in the, in the live demo that, that's coming right away, um, there are a l uh, some more little things that you will find out when compiling and testing. For instance, one thing is org code house package is gone in Grails 3. You just need to re-import some classes. Or um, certain dependency injections. For instance, if you had a, if you injected the uh, Grails application in uh, Grails 2 with, in a, into a controller because you want to, to do something with the Grails application, access some configuration or something. You could inject it with dev Grails application. Would have worked in Grails 2, doesn't work anymore in Grails 3 because you have to declare the type in Grails 3. Uh, that's just some, some tiny little things that you need to be aware or if you copied some source code that uses internal APIs from some um, templates or plugins, for instance, for pagination, I will also show you a typical thing that I came across in the live coding. You, you may want to uh, or may have to adjust certain bits and pieces in there. Um, but I, I can, uh, from my experience, I've now migrated some four to five applications to Grail, uh, Grace 3. It wasn't a huge step. I would say the migration is usually done when you have all the plugins ready in, well, half an hour, an hour work. And then you need to test and fix some tiny little things. I would say the migration step would usually be the next two days until you have a sufficiently stable uh, version of a sophisticated application. If you have a simple application, you should be done uh, in a half a day or something like that. So now let's migrate an application. The application that we are going to migrate is a online music uh, magazine, which I'm running since 19 years now out of Germany. Uh, the music magazine is, first of all, uh, my technical playground. I play with new technologies in there. And a couple of years ago, I decided, ah, I, I want to play around with Grails. So I wrote a, I moved it from Apache Wicked with Spring and Hibernate to Grails 2 with um, MongoDB. Um, and last year, I moved the application from Grails 2 with MongoDB to Grails 3 with MongoDB. Um, the, the magazine focuses on uh, loud, heavy metal, rock, punk, hardcore music. And uh, I would say it is, in terms of the non-commercial magazines, one of the uh, biggest independent ones in Germany. And this is the site, uh, allschools.de. Um, if we reload the application, you can read some news, um, you can uh, access some uh, record reviews, uh, and so on and so forth. There is a tight integration with Facebook, with Twitter. Um, we have RSS feeds. Um, we integrate with tour date um, directories in the web, and um, currently moving away from one, one that's gone. Um, but uh, so it's a I would say rather sophisticated uh, web application. And um, we have right there in this directory um, two, p two pieces, Grails 2 and Grails 3. That's the Grails 2 application uh, with uh, all screws. The data is the MongoDB data. I just uh, dumped uh, the last database backup from last night on my laptop. and. Um, yeah, I would say, let's get our hands dirty and migrate the application. So um, basically here is the source code of the Grails 2 application. You see typical Grails uh, 2 kind of project view. If we 
take a look in there, we see we don't see any Gradle build and so on and so forth. And um, now we, we're on the console, um, Grails3 migration. We change over to the Grails3 directory. And the first step that we want to do is create app, all screws in the Grails. That's running, uh, we change over to all schools, and now we have a Grails 3 application uh, for the site. The first thing we do is, before we import it to the IDE, we copy over a couple of directories uh, to our new Grails 3 project. So it's cp minus rf, um, uh, Grails 2, all schools, uh, source uh, groovy to uh, source main groovy and we do the same thing uh, for the Java sources we have a couple of Java classes in there and um, we do a copying of Grails to the Grails app took a, a little bit because it was quite a bit of source code. And then uh, finally, we move over some uh, tests. Grails to all screws test unit to source test groovy. So as you see, the first step, the copying of stuff was really straightforward. It was just on the shell, copy, 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 copy. Um, and now I'll... Um, add the project to my IDE. Project from existing sources. That's the Grails 3 one. It's a Gradle build. Um, and while that is running, I do a little bit of cheating. Please allow me to copy paste the new dependencies because it would take a little bit too long of a time uh, to search the uh, Maven repositories and plugin uh, repositories. So I, I cheated a little bit and prepared them. So this is our new uh, Grails 3 um, application. You see, Grails 3, all schools. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to add uh, dependencies. Um, so we, we add our dependencies to the, um, to the build file. So what, what we have here is image scaler for image scaling. We, knew, we use Spring Social Twitter. We use a little bit of JSOOP for HTML processing, MongoDB plugin, Spring Data MongoDB, the recapture plugin, and Quartz. And what we have to do is we're not using Hibernate, Hibernate EH cache, or any relational data store. So we just kick out these dependencies. Um, after that, we can go ahead. Um, I'll have uh, the dependencies uh, reloaded quickly in my um, IDE. And while that is happening, I'll um, go into the directory again. Start up grades. And uh, perform a compile step. Let's see if, if everything compiles. Ah, doesn't compile. And he said it's an easy migration. Okay, it's most of these errors are in the utility tag lib. And it is because org code house groovy grails web mapping URL mapping can't be found anymore. As I said earlier, the org code house package is gone. So you need a re-import on these classes. And that's exactly what we are going to do now. So we go ahead um, to the utility tag lib. Make that a little bit bigger. Uh, tag, tag library look up. Uh, yeah, these two, we'll remove them. Import right there and I think down there we have the URL mapping, import it. 
Okay, so basically URL mapping and tag library, tag library lookup have been re-imported. So basically, in the first compile step that we have, we might uh, want to have a success now. Let's see. Ah, oh, next errors. What do we have? And that is exactly now, um, uh, if I scroll into this, uh, article controller, the return type of Java, lang object, get Grails link generator in all schools article controller is incompatible with Grails web mapping link generator in Grails artifact controller support response redirector. Basically, what this means when you get this error message, um, we are now going through the article controller, auto bewertung controller, event controller, news controller, photo gallery controller, record review controller, UI component taglib, and adjust the dependency injections. Now, let's start with the article controller. What we have here is the dev Grails link generator, and when you change that to link generator in Grails 3, you're going to be okay. Uh, next one was auto bewerbung controller. Here we have the problem with the Grails application. You change the dev to Grails application and you're good. Uh, next one is event controller. Here again the Grails application. Uh, you have we have the news controller. That's the only boring coding you will see in this talk. We have the Grails application and the link generator. Ah, what do we have here? Org Codehouse Groovy Grails link generator gone. Um, ah, we were in the news controller, uh, photo gallery controller. link generator, um, record review controller, um, link generator. <coughs> we use the link generator for integration to uh, Twitter to generate some links. Could have moved that to a service as well, but yeah, it's it ended up in the controller for no serious reason at all. And the UI component taglib, which also has the Grace application. So now the compile um, should be running successfully. Build successful. Very nice. So, if we take a look back at our slides, I mentioned there is additional steps to be taken. Um, and that is especially the migrate configuration. So far, uh, we are able to compile. That means that basically all the required dependencies are in the build and that the code is able to compile. This doesn't mean that this code is able to run. If I would run that code, I would fail. So let's start with uh, migration of the configuration. The first is the first thing that we need to do is uh, we go um, into uh, the configuration, and uh, there you see uh, various uh, classes. Uh, the first thing are the URL mappings. This site uses a pretty sophisticated uh, URL mapping strategy, and I'm going to copy this code right there, as it is. Oops, sorry. Cut it out, go to controllers, and in controllers we have a new URL mappings class, and just paste this in there. So we migrated the URL mappings, and we can delete Configuration URL mappings can be tossed away. 
the next thing we need to do is we have config.groovy. We just rename that to application.groovy. And since Grail 3 is running on logback and not log4j, we can go ahead and um, remove the log4j configuration out of application.groovy. It's not necessary anymore. I've blanked out a couple of app secrets for Twitter and so on, not so that somebody <laughs> starts tweeting stuff <laughs> automatically in our name. Um, that's for the demo reasons. Um, the next thing we need to do is we have the data source configuration. Grails, Mongo, localhost, and so on. And we will migrate this one. Um, I'll, I'll just copy that to um, the YAML configuration right away. So first of all, uh, we can kick out Hibernate. We can kick out this data source. We can kick out uh, the whole relational um, H2 database, JDBC related stuff, because this application is running on MongoDB. So unnecessary, but um, uh, we need to adjust that. So basically in uh, good YAML style, oh let me make that a little bit bigger, it's Grails. And that's another thing uh, you need to be aware um, in the new Grails Mongo uh, DB plugin is it's MongoDB. Just need to know it. Um, host, port, database name, boom. So Grails uh, MongoDB configuration has been adjusted. Um, which means we can delete the data source doc Groovy because it's no longer needed anymore. Let's kick that out. Um, build config dot Groovy can be removed entirely because um, this configuration is basically part of the build.gradle. So for instance, all these dependencies that are in there can be removed so we can simply toss out this class. It's not needed. So with that being, let's give it a try. Um, let's run the application. Quite a big application. Ah, okay, we're up and running. Localhost 8080. Let's give it a try. Oh no, Grails runtime exception. What happened? If we look at the stack trace, when you see this strange error message, caused by org bison invalidation operation, read int can only call current bison type int 64 and so on and so forth in the MongoDB stack, this is the point where you need to check your plugin documentation. Well, I was just, I was a guy who said, ah, okay, new plugin, I add it in there, who reads the documentation, I'll figure it out. And I spent hours uh, chasing this thing. But if I would have read the co uh, documentation correctly, I would have found out that there is one thing missing in the uh, MongoDB configuration, which is uh, engine mapping. That's the old mapping persistence engine of the old Grails 2 MongoDB plugin, not the new mapping engine, which has some differences in terms of old data, because we have data persisted with the old engine in MongoDB, and now uh, we changed the mapping engine. It is documented. You just need to read the documentation. So with that, uh, we stop the application. Um, and we run the app. Okay, 
up and running. Now let's see. Ah, that looks way better. So the application is up and running in Grails 3. Let's click a little bit uh, through some stuff. Uh, record review, for instance. That looks nice. Uh, we can check out some photo galleries. Ah, runtime exception. What happened there? Groovy page for class old school's utility taglib. What has this guy done again? Let's check out utility taglib. So we find out that, where is it? Uh, in the uh, call link 192 line, it should be, ah, here. What has this guy done? In front of you is a very lazy developer. He wasn't happy with the pagination of the standard pagination tag library that has been delivered with Grails. He copied the source, forked it, adjusted some things, and used some internal APIs. So, and now that's the problem that I face. Basically, this doesn't work anymore, this capture output, but I figured it out how it goes. It's tag output. How did I figure it out? I checked the source code again from the pagination <laughs> and uh, saw, uh, okay, something has changed. So it's basically tag library output. G link address body. So, and we need the output context. This has changed as well to output context lookup helper, lookup output context. Yes, I know. Give it another try. Stop the app. Run the app again. I mean, if you don't play around with internal APIs, you should be fine. Uh, that was clearly one error where I'm fully responsible. So now let's see if that works. Again, what's now going on? Okay, I'll, I'll cheat now. Because we're a little bit... Uh, running late right there. Let me see. Tag library. Ah, look up. It's look up. Sorry. I'll try. our fingers crossed. Ah, and we're working. So now if I click uh, over there, the record reviews, news, homepage, uh, I can check out some crazy photo galleries. Asset pipeline is working nicely. Yeah, that might take some time now because of the wireless and, and, and so on and so forth. So basically, we've come a pretty good way 
uh, with uh, adopting our Grace application. And if I log in as an author, Um, and let's say I want to uh, change an article. As the founder, I can do whatever I want in there. Let's say uh, we remove all schools present to we present over there. Oops. Oh, okay. Ah, okay, that's uh, an old bug over there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mm. Let's adjust this one. We remove one text uh, and updates, transactions. Everything is working as it should, except for old known bugs in the system. Okay, um, we have a couple of minutes left for questions. Um, are there any questions in the room? Yeah. Um, no, there weren't any filters in there. But um, you would need to adjust. Uh, it's the same with the interceptor kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, test coverage. Um, yeah. Um, I didn't. Um, we have. We are running Selenium tests on this one. Yes. Quartz config. Yes. Uh, yes, it is. It's going to be picked up. Yes. Yes. Uh, wait a minute. I didn't. Uh, so the. Yes. Yeah, if, if you're not yet, yes, if you're not yet in the assets pipeline, you might want to do something there as well. That's true. But since we are already in the required, uh, in, the, in the best practice way here with CSS and JavaScript, we're fine right there. Okay, uh, just a quick note uh, for the end. Um, I will post um, the slides um, to this talk uh, on speaker deck. Actually, they're already there. But I will uh, send out a link on Twitter under at BitBoss. And you can follow me so you get the link. And um, yeah, thank you very much. If there's any additional questions, just come up to me and uh, talk to me. Thank you. <laughs>